franchises here, bud. All right. Welcome to Ride with the D Train. We're talking franchise today. The Boondock Saints, which was made by Franchise Pictures, not Miramax. And uh, yeah, all right. I'm Daniel Ehrenberg. I fucking hate these movies so much. I'd never seen the second one, I, uh, but I hated the first one. Uh, and if you could believe it, the second one's worse. Uh, Logan, what's up? Everything is up, bro. I can't Everything's even. coming up, Logan? Everything. No, nothing's coming up, Logan. Nothing's ever come up, Logan. What do you mean? Um, what you did you did you play basketball on a trampoline yesterday? You listened to some Eminem? How that how that go? <laughs> why why would I play basketball on a trampoline? I thought that's something you like to do with your brother. We used to wrestle on a trampoline. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. All right, you're just combining all my favorite things into I one. I guess so. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to have ladder ladder matches on a trampoline. Right. I say yeah. we did, there were never ladders involved. We just no. I know really you just high. jumped high. Yeah, I get it. I feel like I had so many when I was watching these movies, I was like, I could start the episode that way with like the stutter, that old man's stutter. I could try to fake an Irish accent. That'll be good. Yeah. I could do the Julie Benz thing. I could. What's the Julie you... Benz thing? Whatever she's doing. She's certainly doing something. She's I can't quite something. pinpoint it. She's doing like a Texas accent, though. She's not. Yeah, that's the worst part of it is she's trying to do a southern accent the whole movie. And listen. I'm Julie Benz fan number one over here. No, That's I the, am. Motherfucker. Yeah, see, see, we fight for the title. And <laughs> and even she's terrible in this. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, I, I was like, I could call you a slur. That would be a good way to start the episode. Oh, yeah. Really get everybody great, into the yeah. spirit. Right, right, right. Too, too much going on. Well, I'm excited know, to talk about that. I, I kind of know like what them. you are for not uh knowing what to say at the beginning of the episode don't say it don't say it <laughs> <laughs> you can say so many things i know i know uh what you, you said you liked it they're just so dumb i kind of had a good time Ugh. i mean you just watched overnight the the film about the director troy duffy being a maniac and so that probably helped your viewing of these a lot i haven't seen that movie in a few years and i'm like a creatively broken person at this point and so i kind of got a kick out of this guy just doing everything he wanted to do even though like it was him and his friends like even though i could see like i i didn't like that these type of guys got got their way kind of like you watch yeah. that documentary i don't i don't these, these are like my i'm sorry to the listeners that are like this but these are like my worst types of people kind of my no there are no listeners that are like this okay uh, so I don't like it in that sense, but if yeah, it drives me it. it drives me nuts that Troy Duffy got three hundred thousand dollars. I know, I know, but it was fun. There were lo there are lots of ideas. So and he, and he is trying to do a rip off of Tarantino, and I I enjoy that type of thing. <laughs> there were just so many of them in the nineties, and so many of them were more professionally made than this, like things to do in Denver when you're dead or whatever. Of um, anyway. We're talking Boondock Saints today, and hey, you... even El Mariachi, a little bit vibes of that I got. That's way infinitely better. Yeah, All right. yeah, and made for a lower budget, um, much lower. So there are no people in the audience that are like Troy Duffy, but I'm I'm willing to venture that there are people in the audience that really like the movie The Boondock Saints. There, are, I definitely are. I saw a review. Yeah, of them. because it was a cult phenomenon logan yeah it came out uh january 21st 2000 in theaters but it only ran in theaters for like five days and then it got a blockbuster exclusive release blockbuster really went to bat for this movie a company i worked for and uh they the movie became a really big video hit that's why it got a, a sequel eventually but like I had friends in high school, like I've seen this movie a bunch of times, Logan, because right. I had friends in high school that really swore by this movie, really loved it. And it's like. I don't know, I never liked it, even as a high school kid, but I can see why if you saw this at the right age, like 14 or 15, when like you weren't like totally turned off by like edgelord bullshit. 
like this might have seemed like a cool movie to you and now you have like nostalgia for it and and you can't see past its flaws i get that but um i just never was like i was always just in a room with this movie on going like this fucking sucks <laughs> and not even in a good way you're all for movies that suck but this isn't even one of those that suck no in a good way. No, it's it sucks in like a mean, shitty way. And um, my friend Bill Cosgrove, he was the one who really loved this movie. They're going to say Bill Cosby, I swear to God. No, man, I I'm not friends with Cosgrove anymore. But see, I was friends with him at the time in, in high school and he was like a mess. He was like, I don't, I don't know. His dad was in a band called Suck Dick. That's a, That's a true story. <laughs> With no, no C's. subtlety there, no C's, S U K D I K, and uh, I had their album. I used to see that. I used to listen to and thought it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, Cosgrove eventually he beat me up. Oh, why is that? Yeah, a girl. Because no, no. Uh, we were in a band together, and he, his brother had a drum set, and at some point one of his drums broke. But and I had nothing to do with it. All right. Nothing to do with it. And but his, he insisted I did. And then he said, if you don't give me the fucking money for it by this Friday or whatever, I'm going to beat you up at lunch. We didn't even have the same lunch period, Logan. And he went to your lunch period. He went to my lunch period, found me. And I didn't want to fight him because he, I was friends with him. So I didn't fight back. And he just like beat the shit out of me. And dumped my backpack in the trash. I'm glad you didn't say book bag. Or I would have beat you <laughs> up too. Well, I'm not like that, bro. I'm not a book <laughs> bag guy. But uh, yeah, it what was very traumatized. Suspended, probably. Um, I think we. No, no, he got he got to. Sus- no, it was off school grounds, so I don't even think Whoa. he got in trouble. Um, what do you mean? He but- went to the lunchroom, found you, took you off school grounds, and no, beat you no, up? no, I went out for lunch. Oh, you can go out for lunch. Yeah. Gotcha. How do you know where you were then? Because it's like really, your school. If there was really just break. like one block of four places in walking distance. All right. You could eat at the deli, uh, Pasquale's Pizza, the Jade Palace Chinese place, or the bagel mill. All right. And so he found me in the bagel mill. <laughs> you beat me up. God damn. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, he later joined the military. I hope he's dead today, but probably oh, not. Okay. Um, it's okay. I, I don't hold a grudge, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. You hope he's dead. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he loved the boondock scenes. And I remember he like show the like the first time I watched it in its entirety, he like sat me down. He was like, this movie's a fucking classic. I'm going <laughs> to show it to you. Like He sat me down in his bedroom. We watched it together. Mm-hmm. And I think I was like, I placated him a little bit because, like, I didn't. We were friends. I didn't want him to feel bad that he showed me such a bad movie. Right. I do that every week with you when you give me a movie to watch. Fuck like, yeah, you. <laughs> Hands on a hard body. It was all right. God damn it. Hands <laughs> on a hard body is amazing. No, I'm kidding. That's a good one. All right. Um. Anyway, let's get into it, huh? Yes. Let's freaking get into it. All right. Troy Duffy. By the way, an update on the future. Apparently, we're getting a third one at some point. Did you know this? Yeah, I read that, too. It, it said that Norman Reedus, Ride with Norman Reedus. I mean, it, does, do people get why I say that? He had I a, hope so. Uh, he had a reality show on AMC called Ride with Norman Reedus that was just like Norman Reedus riding motorcycles with celebs and interviewing them. It was sort of like comedians in cars getting coffee, but the people weren't funny and they were on motorcycles <laughs> That's with a great Norman point. Reedus. And most of them, like 65% of them were Walking Dead cast members. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah. And the other 35% were on other AMC shows. Right. Yeah. You you yeah. never watched it, though, did you? Um, I watched like 10 minutes of it once just because I thought it was funny, but it, it's like not entertaining enough to be funny. It was like, this is a show that's on TV. <laughs> that's crazy. And it went for years. Yeah, that was a big show. The Walking Dead. He was Daryl Dixon. He was like the breakout character. He really was for some reason. Yeah. Um, got to marry Diane Kruger and everything. Um, so 
we got uh, Norman Reedus and Sean Patrick Flannery are the leads. Sean Patrick Flannery, of course, played Powder in the film Powder. That's what I know him for primarily. Mine's um, Saw 7. Of course it is. Yeah. Can I, I tell you who Norman Reedus of that. today is? Tell me. Well, now I'm, now I'm actually forgetting his name. The, the guy who was in, well, I was going to say Jennifer's Body. Oh, this but... is a good segment. Yeah, this, this really worked out well. <laughs> Kyle Gallner. I feel like Kyle Gallner is oh, Norman Reedus. Oh, fuck off. Kyle Gallner's better. I agree. I agree. But I feel like he's Norman Reedus today. See, he's because he's like dirty now, but I knew him when he was a little pretty boy. He was uh, on um, Veronica Mars. He played a character named Beaver. Oh, OK. I think I may be <laughs> associating the dirtiness with Norman Reedus. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is what you're doing. I don't know. Norman Reedus, a big breakout, Walking Dead. But anyway, because of that, now they want to do a third Boondock Saints, and it looks like they're going to do it. Like, they're going to write it and executive produce it and star in it, and Troy Duffy has nothing to do with it. Like, oh, no, one wants to, no one wants to fuck with Troy Duffy anymore. I thought he was on the credits. Directed no. by Troy Duffy on, on Letterboxd, it says. Well, that was in development for a while, but the latest announced in 2024. Uh, Troy Duffy has nothing to do with it, but Troy Duffy says that he wants to write a series of novels sequelizing this. Now, I don't think that'll ever happen because I don't believe that Troy Duffy is literate. I think that he definitely is. He wrote a script. <laughs> Anyone could write it. What script? if Troy Duffy gets me into reading novels? Oh my God! Would you read that if a Troy Duffy Boondock Saints <laughs> novel came out? Would you read it? No, the I'm only interested in this because of the because it's a movie, because of Overnight. You're true, right? Yeah, that that's really why we're covering this because you saw that documentary. Yeah, Tim, that was one movie Tim go made me watch. Yeah, so I watched it and I loved it. So now we're here. Oh, that's much better than <laughs> either of these movies. Yes, obviously. Uh, all right, so Troy Duffy. He was this fucking douchebag in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he worked in a bar and he wrote a script while he was working at the bar. All right. Now, in the 90s, it, it should be noted there were a lot of bidding wars on scripts. Like scripts kept getting bought up for like a million bucks and shit. And like some of these movies like never even got made. Um, it was a weird time. It was like a boom time to be a screenwriter in Hollywood. And Troy Duffy got his shit noticed. Um, I think like Paramount was looking at it. So then like Harvey Weinstein came in and he was like, well, if they want it, then I want it. Of course. And, yeah. 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 And so there was a bidding war and Harvey Weinstein paid him four hundred fifty thousand dollars, one hundred fifty thousand of which he eventually had to give back. Um, and. He said, I'll buy your bar <laughs> and you can be the co-owner of it. And he contracted Troy Duffy's band, The Brood, uh, to do the soundtrack. Of course, the other members of The Brood were Edge, Christian, and Gangrel. Yes, of course. Yeah, I think yeah, The yeah. Brood, they, they, they changed their name to The Boondock Saints. Like when they the movie did. Came out. After the movie came out, they changed their name to The Boondock Saints. Um, Atlantic Records... Uh, I gave them a record contract to put out one album. Their album's called Release the Hounds, and I read that it sold 690 copies. Nice. Yeah. Does that work good. with 690? <laughs> I don't think they make money from 690, so I'm okay with it. Um, what uh, Duffy... All right, so Miramax pulled out. You want to like talk about that a little bit? Because the details well, are hazy for me. Yeah. But you but just watched that documentary. In watching it, this is part of the thing that I didn't really understand because it seems like Harvey contacted him and said he would, yeah, buy the bar for him and give him the money for the movie. And then seemingly Harvey just stopped talking to him. I didn't really understand that part because Troy would keep calling him and he could never get in contact with Harvey. He was like, Harvey's just never going to pick up my calls ever again. And then seemingly well, Harvey just kind of never did. It's because they went through a whole casting process with him and Duffy was really difficult during the casting process. And eventually uh, Mir Miramax just like threw up their hands and were like, fuck this guy. Um, 
he initially wanted Mark Wahlberg and Steven Dorff. There is the a part Boondock in the documentary things. he's sitting there with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. And Mark Wahlberg's like, this is the best script ever. This is the best script I've ever read. And then he's like, you're the best actor I've ever known, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Just two awful Boston pieces of shit sucking each other's dicks. It was hilarious. Um, these are the movies the city of Boston deserves, by the way. <laughs> it's true. You're right. Yeah. What about like the town, though? You don't deserve that? Is that too good? No, they don't deserve that. Okay. They don't even deserve Patriot's Day. What about Good Will Hunting? They don't deserve that. <laughs> Who um, does? If not um, them. I don't know. It's made by their boys. They Connecticut. I no, guess they deserve so. it. All right. Uh, so, you know what Mark Wahlberg chose to make instead of the Boondock Saints? Uh, Planet of the Apes? Boogie Nights. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah. Because this had been in development. Like, he, it, like, they bought the script in, like, 1996 or something. But it didn't end up coming out for another few years. In in that moment when he said like the best actor, I was I was like, oh, he's probably talking about Boogie Nights. That's probably what had come out by now. But I guess not even. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So no, no, he was talking about Fear. Um, oh, true. Yeah, you know, sweet roller coaster finger. Right. Okay, um, we got. So th- he wanted for the detective character th- that ends up being played by Willem Dafoe, either Kenneth Branagh or um uh, patrick swayze right see this was the character that miramax really wanted to like promote the movie around like this was gonna be first build guy and like he'll be on the posters and shit and so they wanted a big actor they they pitched sylvester stallone bill murray or mike myers and troy duffy was like no i don't want any of those guys wow come on Troy. yeah (laughs) then as a last ditch, Miramax sent Troy Duffy to New York to talk to Ewan McGregor, try to convince Ewan McGregor to play the character. Okay. Yes. And Troy Duffy went out with Ewan McGregor and they apparently got into a huge fight about the <laughs> <laughs> the death penalty. Oh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> because Troy Duffy is, as you can probably tell from watching these movies, very pro death penalty. Yeah, he wants to kill everyone himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and then like you and McGregor like called Harvey and was like, yo, your boy's a fucking asshole. <laughs> and I think that was the final straw. Yeah. Good for you. Um, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, he said he was inspired to write the script when he was like, a wo- he lived like across the hall from a drug dealer, Logan, mm-hmm. and a dead body, a woman was wheeled out of the drug dealer's apartment at one point. And Troy Duffy was just like, I wish I could punish these motherfuckers. Oh, wow. I think he, I think he wishes he was the punisher. Is what's yeah. going on here. But instead he wrote a screenplay. And I love that the the like message of these movies is like be a doer, not like a watcher. Like you gotta take matters into your own hands and fucking you know, make things change yourself. But like he wrote a screenplay. It's not like he went out and became a boondock saint. He made art about the boot. Come on, that's oh, about the boondock God. saints. He got oh, it out there. You're gonna call this art. Yes, I am. Okay, beautiful. You're not. Come on. No, I, I will not to. give it that much credit. I think you have to. All right. So the movie, uh, Miramax had had given it a budget of fifteen million dollars, but eventually they don't make the movie. They get bought by Franchise Pictures, which is our production company. <laughs> yes, and we gave them six million dollars to make it. Uh, which is still too much. Uh, it is a lot up, of money, actually. Yeah, it, it ended up. Yeah, it doesn't look like it cost six million dollars. No. I'll tell you that much. I, I it remember looks like it screen- cost like fifteen thousand, like El Mariachi. The script, the script, the uh, premiere, and in the overnight they go to it, and he's like, "This is independent." Let me tell you what, this is independent. And I was, and I guess, I mean, it still is. I'm not taking anything away from that, but I thought they were working with like 
Yeah, like four hundred grand or something, not nah, six million. This, That's this a ain't like a fucking clerk's budget. They had six million dollars to make this piece of shit, yeah. and uh, it made thirty thousand four hundred seventy-one at the box office. But then you know it did really well on video, and that's that's what gave it its success. Mm-hmm. Um, Here we are now. I'm glad it got all that success. Yeah, then we couldn't would, talk about it. Would you believe that it wasn't nominated for any awards? That's crazy. Not even not even the uh, AFI for best heroes. <laughs> Are they heroes? Right. I I don't find them too heroic. But they're not villains. They kill bad guys. They kill people. Bad guys. Listen, the Punisher is an anti-hero. You think only okay? Superman is a hero. The only people that don't kill. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But uh, the Punisher. You know, he like the thing that's best about like the best versions of the Punisher is that it, it they don't treat him like a hero. He's he's like a fucking maniac. <laughs> he's just but he's, he's but, a crazy person doing this. The This movie definitely treats them as heroes. But yeah, the, but Punisher's doing it more like it's his, mi- his his mission in life. Like he just has to do it. Not because he's like heroic. Yeah, or and he knows he's going to die at some point doing it. And like he's just gonna do this until he gets murdered. The Boondock Saints, like the second like the cops are after them, they flee the country. What are you gonna do? Just hang around and get caught? Just die, die in a blaze of glory. This is a complaint that they have like a will to live, and they want to do good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, no I issue. <laughs> they're fucking pussies. Well, um, what? I disagree. They they fight bad guys. How can you be a pussy but fight bad guys? They one bad guy you ever. Fought. But like, who do they decide? Bill Cosgrove. But who do yeah, they yeah. decide? Well, you didn't even fight him, you pussy. I, you just took it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be real aggressive. Who do they decide deserves to be murdered? The uh, the the guy at the end. They fucking execute that motherfucker right in front of everybody. Yeah, but what about all the other people they kill? What about him? I don't know. They're like shooting guns willy nilly in a suburban neighborhood. They could have killed like a little kid or something. They have great aim. They have great aim. Okay. The, uh, the bad guys could have killed somebody on accident, but not our, not these guys. Yeah. Th- we'll talk about that. L- l- let's get into the movie, huh? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, who's your favorite character? <laughs> I got to go with the bar owner with the stutter. I hated that character. Why? Because the whole purpose, like Troy Duffy thinks like swearing, that's the way to go. It, he, it reminds me of like if Kevin Smith was really stupid and didn't know anything about pop culture and all you had was the styles dialogue and swearing, but like with nothing around it <laughs> like that's that- Troy Duffy. <laughs> You know what else it is? It's a lot of it's trying to do, especially in the second one. There are tons of like meta dialogue, but it's not smart enough to actually be meta. So it's just being like, oh, what is that? A movie reference? Well, yeah, like, I mean, at one point they talk about Clint Eastwood, but a lot of times they're just like, oh, you're doing a movie thing. Is that a movie yeah. thing? A mo- they're just like talking about a movie, like and, specifically the movies. And it's not like they're poking and prodding themselves, like poking fun at themselves, because you can tell they think what they're doing is awesome yes totally yeah it, it is <laughs> all right sometimes. so it's south boston that's where this takes place southeast you ever been there boston oh yeah 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 every time i've been to boston i've heard somebody call somebody else a faggot of course yeah that's why you visit boston to experience is, that is it is it i think so <laughs> isn't harvard there yes um, yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Camden's nice. It's a little college town or whatever, but if you venture outside of there, it's brutal. It, just, it sucks. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I, I, I once took a trip to Boston and, and it was so lame, but I was in a band in college and uh, I took a trip to Boston. I had such a bad time there that when I came back, we wrote this song and the chorus was the, I, the line was, I wish I died in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's a horrible place to be. It's a horrible place to live. Hey, if you live there, all right. 
But it, it, uh, yeah, and it also has the most annoying sports teams. But that's largely just because they're fan bases. It's not the team's fault. Not everybody there is bad, though. No, I'm sure that's true. Just everyone I've ever met. I know that because I live in Alabama, and I like to think that I'm not bad. So I, 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 I don't judge people so harshly from where they live or anything. I judge them more on their character. So if yeah. you're listening out there and you're from Boston, I, Logan I, I, has I, a dream. What was that? I have a dream. Yeah, you have a dream. What's that? Where people are not judged by <laughs> where they were from, but by the content of their character. It's kind of true. Yeah, that is you're a real mean. MLK. Yeah, I don't want to say that, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, all right. So it's Saint, it starts on St. Patrick's Day because the characters in this movie are Irish. Sometimes. What do you when mean? They, when they want to be. The sometimes. accents come and go. Sometimes yeah, yeah, they're it's... really heavy. Sometimes they're barely there. But... I actually think Reedus is better at it than the other one. I, I don't think so. No? I don't think I, so. I Because there were scenes where like, I was like, he just forgot he was Irish in this scene. <laughs> but same with Reed. But also maybe I think I know Reedus' voice more. So he, I, can, I can hear him doing the, the putting on the voice. And Flannery's, he, that's like an Irish name. He. I feel like it probably yeah, comes more naturally that, to him. I, I feel like Sean Patrick Flannery sounds less like a human being than a character Troy Duffy would have created. Exactly. So I think he fits it a little better. Okay. But read as uh, I know uh, him as Daryl Dixon, you know? So Yeah. Mm. Wasn't he in Blade? Uh, one of the Blades? You might be thinking of Steven Dorff, who they wanted for the role. No. Really? I don't know. He might be in there. I don't care. I thought he, I thought he was in one of them. <laughs> keep, keep going. All right. So he's in Blade Two. Oh wow! All right, good catch. Worked with Guillermo. Yep. Uh, so on St. Patrick's Day, we were they're in a church, and um, even the priest is a bad actor. I thought like the priest has a monologue at the beginning. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Everybody's and a bad actor. Everyone, Except yeah. Will. He's a bad actor in this too. No, nope, disagree. I saw some takes like that. I disagree. I think everyone's bad. Nope. Uh, so fucking. You catch Troy in this scene? No, he was in it. <laughs> yeah, he, he, him and I think his brother or his friend or one one of his guys that's in the documentary there at the at the bar. You mean Gangrel? Yeah, Gangrel is there. Yeah. Whenever he, uh, whenever the guy says like, "I gotta shut down the bar. I gotta sh- 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 shut down the bar because we're having people come and d- 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 close it or whatever, whatever he says." Ass. And, uh, fuck ass fuck yeah and they're 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 doing hilarious reactions like if you watch them they're hysterical <laughs> yeah are they trying to act yeah it's so funny <laughs> that's great yeah um so troy duffy the screenplay he strikes me as the type of dude that like read a lot in high school but then never again you're right and and then he just like put all the things he knows like all like the cool shit he remembers reading about in the movie and dialogue so like right away in the church scene we get the thing about kitty genovese you know which which was the lady who was like murdered in like a courtyard and everybody watched they talk about it in watchmen so like i mean it's not that crazy a thing to know but uh he 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 wants to put that in there and we also get the thing rule of thumb where like at some point it was legal to hit your wife with anything that was as wide or smaller than your thumb oh and and you get a hilarious joke like a thumb that's not gonna hurt you maybe they should have changed the law to something wider than a thumb because this movie (laughs) hates women just fucking there aren't any no uh not really not in this first one, anyway. There are some strippers in the sin bin, I believe. That's about. Oh, it. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're supposed to cheer at that. Like that's supposed to be a really funny, like laugh line where you're like, "Yeah, Norman Reedus should punch a woman." That's yeah, great. that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We should cast a woman for him to punch. Yeah. But Troy Duffy's afraid of talking to women, I think. He might yeah. be a virgin. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Troy Duffy is the type of dude that actually might listen to this and like Oh, you. you're right. Oh my god. This is the first time I ever thought about that. You're right. He could be the first filmmaker who ever listened to our podcast. Yeah. Well, except for Zack Snyder. 
You think Zach? Oh, but Zach was there present while we did. We it. had him on the show, yeah. And and George Lucas, obviously. That's true. Him. We've had some, but, <laughs> We've but had a couple. And uh, Ratner. Like That's have... true, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, <laughs> Scooby Doo. Wow. Um, you can just say Scooby Doo. Yeah, you can. Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. Brett Ratner should direct a Scooby Doo movie. What do you think? No. <laughs> think so. That's terrible. Chris Tucker is Shaggy. It'd be all right. That'd be good, actually. Thank you. Jackie Chan is Fred. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know who else he's worked with. (laughs) All right. Um, So, yeah, the bartender with Tourette's has to shut down the bar soon. He, like, tells them in this moment, and they're all reacting like crazy. And then, like... he says, yeah, like the Russian mob is buying it off me. And then like one second later, a guy named Chekhov walks in from the Russian mob like, yes, I'm shutting this down. <laughs> Almost on cue. And um, uh, the bartender has a fun line here where he says, make like a tree and get the fuck out of here. And um, that's just a joke from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Maybe he hadn't seen that movie. <laughs> I, I believe he had. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So the structure of the movie generally is uh, Willem Dafoe investigates a crime scene. And then we see it, how it happened. And then we see how it happened. And then that happens again. And sometimes again, he tells us again. how it happened. Yeah. Like as it's happening. That's kind of sometimes. Fun. Oh, well, there's that one part where he's like walking through it. Right. Yeah. They do it with Julie Benz in the second one, too. Yes. That's the part in the documentary where Willem Dafoe is like asking for direction from Troy Duffy. And Troy Duffy's like, and then I'm going to call cut. What don't you understand, <laughs> Willem Dafoe? Like, are you a moron or something? Yeah. It was hilarious. What are you, some kind of fag? Oh, man. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I, I guess I, I don't want to be Troy. That's Duffy. this kind of episode. They, yeah. Listeners know it, probably. I guess. Uh, all right. So, where are we at? <laughs> Willem Dafoe. Oh, so we meet the Willem Dafoe character, and he's like one of these geniuses. He's supposed to be like a real, I guess, like comedy version of. Uh, Will Graham. Yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> yeah, from he gets in the point. mind of the killer and really, he really uh plots out exactly what happened. Yeah, and you know he's very effete because he listens to opera while he's while he's investigating. Mm-hmm. Good mm-hmm. idea. Great idea. See, some a lot of these ideas you're shitting on, but but I was watching it. I was like, oh, at least there's an idea. All right, there's an idea. They put no, no, pennies it, on the, the eyes. That's the an movie. Idea. Has- Oh, did you catch the part where like you could see the guy's eyes twitching like crazy underneath the like I could not <laughs> no. believe they didn't do another take. Oh, no, I didn't. There were a lot of times wild. like that. I it was, like, we can do it another was, take with that? It was after the rope scene, you know, like where they're upside down shooting people. Right, the ho- big hotel. That was pretty Yeah, cool. there's this shot of like a dead guy on a couch and they're putting the fucking pennies on his eyes. And it, it, I've never seen a dead like anyone's i've never seen a live person's <laughs> eyes twitch that bad that's hilarious no i didn't see this but i, I know the scene so i'll probably go back and watch it like, yeah, when sure. i watch this again in a week I'll, I'll are you gonna watch this again ever the first one maybe oh my god I've only why seen it once why would i not watch it a second time in my life dude the, in I, 20 I, years i'll tell you what I, now that i've done this for the podcast i'll never watch this fucking movie again and it is like is a weight time? off my no it is not this is your fourth time. I think more than that. Time, I, I'm time? telling you, this was put on a fucking lot in high school. All right. Doesn't and mean I, you watched it though. But it I was didn't. on. And and you know, I watch movies, so I was paying attention. And it, you know, it's like how I had to watch the Big Lebowski a lot. But like I I always just hated it. And then I rewatched it years later because it had such a cult following. I was like, maybe as an adult, I'll get it. And it was like the opposite. It was like, wow, I was a fucking genius when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I need to watch it again. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll go down more. All right. Don't you want uh, that? Would you want? Would you want me to only have this viewing where I kind of enjoyed enjoyed it? You kind of enjoyed it. Well, I think compared to the second one, I think I more like got a kick out of it. 
I don't know. Like the second one is worse, but it's like it's longer too. It's like shitting on a piece of shit. And the second yeah. one's like more racist, more homophobic somehow. Like, how did that happen? And it's later to like, it, so it should be less, later. but it's I know more. what is happening. Um, yeah, I, I, I honestly think these t- might be two of the five worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> ever seen? Yeah. Well, I was watching Boondock Saints, and I was like, "How is this?" Daniel says this is like the worst movie ever, but the Boondock Saints two exists. That can't be worse. Well, I hadn't seen but I, that. Yeah, but you, you just hadn't seen that. I guess the, this is the worst movie you'd ever seen. I guess right until I saw the sequel to it, new number one. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Wow. Honestly, like it might. It's certainly up there, and it's two hours long. You know what? I had trouble finding the two-hour cut because there's apparently a fucking Troy Duffy director's cut of the second one that's two and a half hours. Oh, I think I watched that. You no, did? No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, that. my God. Like, I, Amazon only has the director's cut, and I was like, I, I can't do it. And so it's like midnight. I just got home from work trying to look for Boondock Saints 2. I'm, I could have fallen asleep right then. <laughs> and and I, I had to, like, do some, like, detective work. Yeah. That's always the worst. I found it on Apple Plus. Really? Yeah. Been three ninety nine for this piece of shit. <sighs> all right, so Defoe, he's a genius, and then there's these other cops who are all dumb. Yeah, I fucking hate uh Green Greenly. Not a Greenly fan. Fuck that guy. I might give him MVP in the second one. No way. Did he die in the <laughs> one? Yeah, he does. Did he? Did he get with Julie Benz in that movie? I, I feel like tell. I feel like right before his death, he walks in like really proud of himself, and it's because and it seemed to me like he had finally sealed the deal with Julie Benz because that was like his whole character. He was in love with her. Yeah, and then he dies right after, and I was like, did he fuck Julie Benz? What is that moment? Right, because know. you know she's a genius FBI guy as well, but she's also a fucking whore because she's a woman. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. There's mm-hmm. that moment where she makes him look, stare at her vagina, right? Yep, and he's like, mmm, smells good. Yeah, he is like that. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> what was up? Did you like the sexual assault in this movie? Which, which Maybe one? we're jumping all over the place at this point. But it's with the Ron Jeremy. We, when we kill Ron Jeremy in that Ugh. scene. Stop and... putting Ron Jeremy in mainstream movies, please. We did. Didn't we? Yeah, I, I know. But, like, Ron Jeremy is such a bummer. Like, he was like this famous porn guy because he was like so ugly like <laughs> and, right. and it was like it like dudes feel better about himself but like i i remember when i was a kid like i would watch like the porn channels like spice or i'd like download porn on like limewire or something and like it anytime ron jeremy would be in one i, I couldn't watch it no he's like too gross too gross yeah, and then it turned out he like raped a million women, and then they put him on trial for it, and he couldn't like get punished for it because he had like Alzheimer's. What the hell? Yeah, his his brain was all fucked up. Jeez. So yeah, he's in the Italian mob in this film. Does it make you gay if you only want to watch an attractive man in your porn? No. Here's the thing. It makes you gay. If you were born wanting to have sex with the same people of your own. Obviously, I just said that as a comedic joke. I wasn't actually asking (laughs) if it made you gay. (laughs) You know how I know you're gay? You like Um, cold play. (laughs) That's That's a line from the 40-year-old virgin. Right. Um, All right. Oh, but uh, we we kill that guy, and and the guy Rocco, he like grabs one of the one of the strippers' boobs while she's passed out, and then, cool. and then there's like a record scratch, and then he's like, "I'll pay, don't worry." Yeah, it's like oh my god, what the fuck is happening? I hate Rocco. Yeah, yeah, what Rocco. That, was scene? that was emotional. Shut up. He's supposed to be like the real breakout comedy character in this movie. Like you could tell they love him. Like it's it's played by a dude with the last name Della Rocco. And it's because like Troy Duffy knew him and wrote this part for him. He like really it was like this guy's fucking hilarious. I gotta get him in a movie. And I hate him. 
I not found a- him so unlikable and unfunny throughout. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you, but not only... I, well, I kind of like that one scene that he had. I mean, there's a lot of the dumb jokes that Duffy writes, but what was that one where he's like, <laughs> he's is he talking around Jeremy when he's like, he asks like the Mexicans, like, what would your one wish be to have all my Mexican friends go to Mexico? Oh, what? That, that was like th- that insanely racist joke. You liked that? It, it I, I realized it was an insanely racist joke. And I kind of knew it was coming, but when it happened, I I, I kind of got a chuckle. I was like, "Oh yeah, obviously, all right." It, like I thought it was kind of well a well done joke. Yeah, do you like the parts where anytime know. he said "black guys," the uh, mom no, boss no, 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 corrected him to say the n word. It's a super uncomfortable scene. I I get it, but I th- I think the joke it's a pretty well done joke. <laughs> Come on, I don't know. Jesus Christ, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but by the way, he, he's he's playing a character named David Della Rocco, like because there's the played moment Rocco. Well, it, there's it, the it, moment where Willem Dafoe is like doing the research. He has his finger, and he's he he says there's a dialogue where he says David Della. Oh my gosh! And he realizes it's like the same guy he had seen like from earlier. Oh, yeah, like, I missed it. I missed it. Yeah, and so he so he confirms like that's the character's name, David Della Rocco, in that moment. All right. Well, so he's playing himself. Great. So, but anyway, I I wish I could kill him in real life. Um, Do you like when he anyway comes back in the sequel. I feel like we're all over the place, but that, I hate it. that was like the worst part of either movie. Well, they needed to. He was such a breakout, hilarious character in the first one that you couldn't have a sequel without him. But he, he yeah, I know. <laughs> and he come, he just comes on to like t- tell them like his beliefs in the world. Yeah, and he's the one who has the big monologue about like there are doers, there are watchers, like everything else. If you're not out there fucking murdering criminals, everything else is just coffee house bullshit. I hated that part. I hated all the parts, although every part that I yeah, 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 that's fair enough. Did all you right, like so- Il Duce? No, is that how you say that? No, can we get to him in a minute though? Yeah. Because what happens here, the the first sequence that Defoe's investigating, he catches Sean Patrick Flannery and Norman Reedus right away. And they're able to say that it was self-defense. All right. Sean Patrick Flannery jumped off of a roof with a toilet and survived. No broken legs or anything. He's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's that's how legs work. Um, And they go to prison. All right, but they don't like stay in prison. They just like sleep over the. It's night. like a holding cell. Yeah, they're just in a holding cell, and they ask to be put in there. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, when you see them in there, they both wake up in the middle of the night in this like trance, quoting proverbs. It well, they realize like they have to kill now. I guess like they have to kill the bad guys. Yeah, but anyway. The whole rest of the movie is like the boondock saints killing people and Willem Dafoe investigating every crime scene. But never again for the entire rest of the movie are those two dudes uh, who just killed a bunch of mob people in in an alleyway. They're never again suspects. Well, but because then he starts like becoming on their side eventually but like there's like two or three crime scenes before that where we do the stupid flashback structure where willem defoe's getting frustrated because he can't figure out who's doing this oh yeah they and i'm they like should be maybe it's one. those two dudes you just talked to about the crime that was just like these crimes yeah that's a good point he should automatically know that it's them or at least bring him in for questioning yeah at least yeah, at least they should be suspects yeah at least talk to them right yeah it's fucking insane. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if you want to talk about Il Duce, we can. You like Il Duce? Because I don't, I don't understand this character. What do you mean? So he's pretty simple. He was like an assassin for the mob, right? Yeah. All and right. He got arrested and, and went to prison. He's been in prison for thirty years. He just happens to be getting paroled at exactly the time the Boondock Saints are doing this. Oh, really? I thought yeah. we get. I thought we brought. We get him out of jail for this one job. No, no, no. They, they said afterwards. he's getting paroled. Oh shit! That's a coincidence. Yeah, it's a great coincidence. Um, and 
So he gets out of prison. We see him go after the boondock saints. Okay. It seems to me that he's trying to kill them in that scene. He doesn't know yet who they are. He doesn't know that they're his sons. He doesn't see their face up close. Okay. Even so, he's supposed to be the greatest assassin of all time. He runs, he finds these. Two guys. He's all, he only needs to kill two guys, maybe three if you count Rocco. Mm-hmm. And they are stationarily standing still on a raised porch. Right. All right. And he has six guns and he is unable to hit them even once. Yeah, that's more of a problem I have, I guess. He's a terrible. It's, he's supposedly the greatest assassin ever. And he can't yeah. do one assassination. On he's the, he absolutely terrible. Oh, yeah. he does. It's a good point. So I, I, it's like if like WWE brought in Brock Lesnar and he was like managed by Paul Heyman, he was like this big badass guy, and then like they brought him out and he like immediately got his ass beat by like Christian. Yeah, like it's like you're it, you just neuter this character the second we meet him. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You, you're, you're totally right. But I kind of didn't even have the thought. I was just like, oh, he's, a, he's obviously a badass. He's got like eight guns, six, six guns. Mm-hmm. And Defoe thinks it's like six assassins, but it's just one guy with six guns. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah, is that cool? And, and th- yeah, I like all the stuff. With <laughs> Defoe. The, the, whenever Defoe was like, how do they kill Ron Jeremy? And he's like, because well, there are two guns and the only bullet A went here, bullet B went here. And he, then he realizes he's like, we got a cowboy on our hands or something like that. Oh, God. When he realizes he was using the guns to kill both. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. I listen. Willem Defoe's an incredible actor. I loved him. I, I, I had no problem, honestly. I, Especially because I, I knew the story. I knew they were trying to get a big actor and they landed on Defoe. I feel like Defoe's coming into this. Like, I got to show out. I got to fucking rise to the occasion. The occasion he's trying to. Person. Yeah, he's very big. You know, he, he was trying to be the breakout. But, like, I just found his character so annoying. And I hate that they made him gay just so that they can use the F slur a lot with and get away with it and like make a lot of gay jokes. Why do they care about getting away with it? That's not a concern they have. But like other characters that aren't gay are using it you too. You can tell, you can tell like the scene where he like wakes up in bed with that like Asian man, like correct. He was a terrible him. actor. The Asian man? He was awful, right? Yeah, yeah. And like the the guys like on so Defoe's like on the phone and the guy's like trying to cuddle him and he's like what the fuck was that and he's like I thought we could cuddle and then Defoe gets up and he just goes fag yeah cuddle what are you yeah yeah and I'm just like it 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 sucks yeah it sucks did you like when he dressed up in as a woman no and he doesn't for a second look plausibly like a woman really I kind of disagree I mean, all the mob guys are like, hey, baby, come on in, suck my dick. And and like, it's Willem Dafoe in drag. That is not an attractive sight. Uh, Maybe not an attractive woman, but I thought he could have passed as a woman. I think he has like really good. They're um... the Italian mob in the Sopranos. They own a strip club. That's who Italian mob guys are fucking. Not dudes who look like Willem Dafoe. It happens. There was the one that was gay. Remember him? Who know? Who cares? Why? Why are you so concerned about who they sleep with? Because that's how he sneaks into the house. That's like a big part of the movie, right? He understands that they'll sleep with anybody. You just I, have to show up and try to be a woman, and the work. Are you being devil's advocate? Like you're frustrating me in this episode. No, I, I feel like you're complaining about things I don't have complaints about. Though. Okay, so okay. I just don't. I don't know if that. that I, I just have complaints about everything. Like, you're not going to find me saying a kind word about this movie. So, like, for a certain segment of the audience, like, I don't think this is going to be a fun episode to listen to. Well, I feel like a lot of people that if they like any movie that we don't like, it's not fun. So it, sometimes that just happens. I hope. I or if hope they have any right. differing opinion, maybe it's not fun. I don't know. Uh, <sighs> no, I feel like it is fun. When I used to listen to you and Henry, I didn't care if you guys agreed with me or not. I just liked listening to what you guys thought. So. All right, well, that's good. That's good. That makes me feel better. Um, all right, where are we at? What do you want to talk about? 
Uh, he dresses up as a woman. What else? That? Oh, we, we that, kill Rocco. That's, that's by the time we're like helping out the Saints. It drives me crazy in this move in both of these movies that like anyone that finds out that they're the boondock saints that are like vigilante killers or whatever they just like no matter who they are they're just like oh you guys are amazing i need to be a part of this very important mission you th- so you think they should have more opposition more people trying to like yeah down? I, I i would argue that i don't think you could find two fbi agents that both just want to kill with the boondock saints right we haven't seen them Wait, the one to kill with the Boondock Saints? Every single law enforcement officer <laughs> that finds out that they're the Boondock Saints immediately is like, all right, well, I'm obviously not going to arrest you because you guys are heroes. Right. Well, the, yeah. the thing is, I, I guess that what they're doing is just so good that that everyone sees it as good. Yes, but what Maybe they're doing is maniacal and awful. But that's, I guess, that's like the sides of of like the civil, the Avengers Civil War movie. Wait, what was that? What, what's your take on the death penalty, Logan? Because I'm starting to worry. Um, I think people, I think they should rot in jail <laughs> forever Thanks. and ever. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. But that's, but that's like the take on uh civil war. Like, are these people doing good or doing bad? Because so people are actually getting killed, even though they are doing good. It's like these guys. These guys it's are saving the... people, doing good, even Sup- though. Oh my God! The it's like any they, superhero story, they die in an accident. In that, the Superhuman Registration Act in those movies is somewhat interesting because it's it's like two different ways of being a superhero, and which way is the right way. And in this case, it's just like, oh wait, you're killing criminals without a trial. That fucking rules. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I do see. I guess I'm playing a little too devil's advocate i don't make any sense anymore i think in the third one we'll see that we'll play into that more four cops and two fbi agents find out that they are the boondock saints and not only do they let them go but they want to become a part of the mission right that's insane yeah you're right this will be and and i think it's because troy duffy like really believes like only pansies would disagree with this pansies like ewan mcgregor yeah that'll be hilarious they have a character named ewan in the next one <laughs> well he's not a part of the next one i guess yeah um all right what else you got oh man i mean there's probably so much that happened right yeah i mean there's a bunch of dumb shit. there's a black and white sequence with like rosary beads that sucks there's um there's a scene where a cat gets shot oh yeah that's crazy i didn't expect that I was bummed out by that because I like cats. I read that the, it was because Troy Duffy had had a girlfriend, some bitch. All right. Yeah. And she had four cats. And so th- he was like, this is my way of getting back at her. Wow. Fucking slut. I hope and, she didn't uh, see his fucking movie. And I, I saw a quote from Troy Duffy. He said, that's the only really self-indulgent thing in the movie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, I would argue every moment of the movie is self-indulgent. Yeah, I think all of it was. But yeah, okay. Yeah, that was a wild moment. No yeah. sad. It really was. All right. <laughs> a lot of blood. Anyway. Uh, all right. So Rocco dies. We kill Rocco. And then we realize that Il Duce is our father. Right? Which I also don't really understand. Because he's been in prison for 30 years, okay? They said 30 years? Yeah. These characters aren't even 30, I don't think. That's what I'm saying. They have Irish accents. They were clearly brought up in Ireland, and they love their father. Like It's like they grew up with their father, like a normal family, you know, nuclear family. Why is that normal, to grow up with your father? I said like a normal nuclear family unit. That's why I I added that. Sorry fucking christ sorry i'm sorry <laughs> uh it's fine but uh so but it doesn't make sense because he was in prison for 30 yeah, that, years in america right and yeah, then and we it, get flashbacks to him and he's in america and those too in the second one right but that was before he got it he was uh all oh, right so he was never in ireland what the hell wait he, so why like, do they have irish accents maybe maybe that's why they barely have an irish accent <laughs> They're not supposed to barely have an Irish accent. It's just bad acting. 
but maybe that's the reasoning he was like well we'll pull set the dad in america too maybe but then the, but then at the second movie starts they're all in ireland and they have like a whole community there that like knows and loves them yeah i think that's the flashback should have been in ireland probably right yeah but one of them had to be peter fonda as a young man he couldn't do an irish accent Peter Fonda? You think Peter Fonda could be bothered to do an Irish accent in this fucking movie? No, definitely not. Just he doesn't have to be Irish. Yeah. I don't know. Yuli's Yuli's pot of gold. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So do you want to talk about that that part where Willem Dafoe gets drunk and somehow ends up in a confessional with the Boondock Saints? What do you mean somehow? We we saw exactly how it happened. Well, why is he so drunk? Because <laughs> he went to a bar and got drunk. He's It's such a great coincidence. He gets blackout drunk, leaves in the morning, and it's on the same... It's at the same church that the Boondock Saints are going to. And they have to go early to the church. They specifically say that because they don't want to get caught. But I don't know why going early is going to help them. Before I, church I, is open. <laughs> before church is open before church service at 10 a.m all right whatever i mean you asked for i'm answering your question that's fine i don't know how church works yeah i do kind of so i think that's what happened but yeah so we go there and and willem he's what passed out in the booth in the uh confessional yeah and this is where he decides like he vows to help them and i thought he was gonna like sober up later and be like oh i'm not fucking doing that but no like when he's sober later he's just like more into it than ever well he got the word of the the priest like help them do it and once you get the, oh, word of the priest God. you can't back out yeah but the priest they forced him to say that the boondock saying willem doesn't they, know that but they never tell him that like they they ruin willem defoe's life in the second movie he's still like in love with them and he doesn't know that he was manipulated into this. Exactly. Only we know that. Yeah, so he is kind of a tragic character when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Give I do. so much credit. <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought that was a great scene. Yeah, so Willem decides to help him. And, uh, and, then, and then I don't even remember what happens. Because well, Willem like leaves. He got like he's gone at the end of the movie, isn't he? Yeah. Well, we do the thing. It's like three months later, and they're they're working with their dad now, and they like go to the trial of like that mob boss, and they oh, execute right. him in the trial, and are some somehow able to get out of the courtroom and out of the the you know court building just like fine and run away. Yeah, no problem. Because Willem is there. He's like about to stop them, but then decides otherwise, I think. And then I feel like that's like the last time we see him. We don't even get any resolution to him. He's just he disappears, I think. Well, we see him fishing in the second movie. In the second one, we see him again. But yeah, <laughs> yeah but in this one, he just disappears. I didn't expect him in that next one, really. I was like, Me oh, neither. Willem's gone. He, he has a surprise, yes. uncredited appearance at the very end. Oh, I didn't know he was uncredited. But. They even say like Smecker died. So I was like, oh yeah, he turned him down. Right. That's what I thought too. But he faked his own death, bro. Yeah, he did. Because Darla was at his funeral. She saw the funeral. And- yeah. And her skirt was a little risque for a funeral, as he, he tells us, because she's a woman. So she's a fucking whore. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So that's, is that the end of this movie? I don't know. What yeah. I give it a one. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go two. <laughs> you, you really this gets the two i don't know i think it's worth. i think it's worthy of being a, a filmed <laughs> i don't know i think it's a worthy movie i don't i really don't i think the second one being so bad made me re look at the i'm first sure one. it did but like that's that's the kind of thing like i i remember like uh this came up in Universal Soldier, where it was like I wanted to give one a two just because it was better than the other one. Mm-hmm. And you can't, sometimes there are just different gradients of ones. But you guys used to do that on the podcast. It used to be like, I this know. is like and the we best. We were wrong. We were wrong to do I that. I kind of like the way you guys would do that. <laughs> okay. Well, you carry the torch, buddy. Yeah, I will. Yeah. But I don't know. Any, any, I'm not only giving it a two because of that. I kind of do it. I, I'd rather give it a two than a one. I have more okay. reasons why I'd give it a two over reasons I'd give it a one. So okay, who's your MVP? I'm going with Willem Dafoe. I really loved him. I don't. I don't get it. 
Yeah, I mean, he's the only choice, so I'm going to go with him, too. I thought it was, like, the but, easiest choice ever, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, it's it's not his finest hour. No. Um, and who's your LVP? Well, my first instinct was Norman Reedus, but it seems like you're not going to go that way. But I kind of want to go with this Detective Greenlee. All right, I'm going to go with Rocco. Really? No, I'm not going to go Rocco. I thought he worked more for me than he did for you, I guess. Yeah. Well, you love this going... joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel weird going Greenlee for the LVP because I don't think he's the least valuable. I think it's one of the Saints are probably least valuable. You know what's funny about Greenlee? Mm-hmm. The actor who plays him, his name is Bob Marley. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was fucking wild. <laughs> I'll go Greenlee LVP. I don't know. Okay. Let's move on to the second movie. So Troy Duffy's back, writing and directing this bad boy. I think his brother might have a story credit. He does. Yeah. Okay. Um, this actually had a theatrical run. It came out December 11th, 2009, on a budget of $8 million. And in its opening weekend, Logan, it made more money than the first movie made in its whole run. That makes sense. And it, 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 But it totaled out at $10.6 million. All right. Not Which isn't great ever. for an $8 million budget. No, but you can't imagine they did that much promotion for it. So, Are you kidding me? You think, you think they sunk the $8 million also into... into um... Maybe not $8 million, but I remember, like, maybe it's just because I'm in New York. Like, I saw ads for this movie. I assume they spent about $13 million on the total production so they definitely lost three or four million dollars but not the worst thing ever i don't know it probably did well on dvd yeah i'm sure they made money back then yeah all right so it came in at number 141 at the box office for that year it made slightly less than the kate beckinsale detective thriller whiteout based on the based on the comic by greg rucka and uh yeah i've read that comic and uh, made slightly more than Next Day Air, which I've actually heard is good. I don't know it. Well, that's because it's it's like uh, the whole cast is black. And you don't pay oh, attention yeah. to those movies. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Logan. You were Logan. saying it. That's not even true. That's not even that true. It is true. It's I know all about uh, Lee Daniels, the butler. Oh, I've never seen Lee Daniels, the butler. I never saw it, but I know all about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I saw the preview when it came out. Yeah, I did, too, bro. Yeah. You ever so... see Precious based on the novel Push by Sapphire? Never saw it. See? Should I? Gotta check it out. But yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not great or anything, but it's worth a look. All right, I'll do it. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's talk about the second one. It starts with Rocco narrating, and I'm just like, what? He's dead. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we go to Ireland and the saints have these big fake beards <laughs> and they're herding sheep. Like Ireland in this movie is depicted as being it's like still the 1800s. Hoity, 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 hoity. Like Ireland. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I read that Irish people got mad that the Boondock Saints, they drink Bushmills throughout this movie. Oh, yeah. And Bushmills is from Northern Ireland, which is run (laughs) by the Brits still, you know, like real Irish people drink Jameson. Wow. I love that complaint. That's a serious complaint. That is a serious complaint. Trade off. You don't know shit, bro. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Both are good whiskey. So. Um, So anyway. Billy, now we get Billy Connolly narrating, and I'm like, is this whole movie going to be narrated just by like different people? Is this like election or something? Or uh, Goodfellas? <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, Billy Connolly, he's he's their dad still. He's not really in it too much. He doesn't fly back to the country with them. Well, he remember he pops up later for some reason. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like a showdown. Yeah. Um. Okay, back in Boston. A saintly priest gets murdered. We know he was like, listen, there's a lot of priests that like rape little boys, right? Right. Like tons of them. They're all over the place. Like little boys are getting raped by priests constantly. Um, it's, but that's actually true. <laughs> it really is true. It's uh, so scary. 
<laughs> but this priest was nice. And we're told that because um, they asked the boondock saints in Ireland, did you know him? And Norman Reese is like, no of him. He, he was into soup kitchens and youth hostels. And I'm like, oh, man, nah, what, what a fucking great guy. Yeah, that's all you know. That's yeah, that's yeah. a good line. So he said soup kitchen. So now you know everything's cool. Um, I bet you've never done that. What, gone to a soup kitchen? Mm hmm. You mean like you volunteered at right. one? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. no, of course I've never done that. Yeah, of course. So you're not as good as this guy. I'm not as good as this fake character that Troy exactly. Duffy made up in a movie. Yep. Okay. I'm not either. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying. You're talking right. shit, it seems like. I'm talking shit about poor writing. Okay. It's I'm not I'm not ripping on a man who would be in a soup kitchen. I'm ripping on the writer who who writes like, oh, the way I'm going to let them know this guy's a good guy. Is no, I know. I, I, I know. I know. All right. Um, and th so that murder was a copycat. It's like somebody scream pretending two. to be the boondocks <laughs> like scream two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like we kill Maureen and uh... right. Steven you know, Orth or yeah, Steve Forrest, one of the exactly. Two. We kill another uh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, they fly back to Ireland. No, they're from they're in Ireland. They yeah. fly back to Boston to like. We cut our beards up. first, though. Yeah, and then they immediately are like, maybe we should have kept those beards because now people are going to recognize us. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that what that is is a flaw in the movie. And Troy Duffy thinks if he points it out, then it's no longer a flaw. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Maybe, yeah, they probably should have just kept the beards. It's like the yeah. start of Borat too. Borat is like walking around with a big beard on, trying not to get recognized. But they're all like, Borat, Borat. He's getting chased around because they know he, he's shooting a second movie. So oh, they're, yeah. They're like, Borat. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we get introduced to a new FBI guy, but it's not a guy. It's a lady. Played by Julie Benz, Darla from Buffy. Yay! I wish I was more excited to talk about her, though. Me too. We were more excited in Rambo 4, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, not really. I didn't know her then. Right? Oh, well, I was excited. You, Yeah, you were. But, but even then, you couldn't really talk about her because I wouldn't have understood anything. So. It's true. But I'm pretty, I'm, I must have mentioned Darla like a hundred times. I'm episode, sure you anyway. did, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Julie Benz, she's introduced like to this like fart rock i thought it was kid rock at first but then i looked it up and it's it's a poor man's kid rock oh yeah 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 um if if you should play maybe this song rock. maybe at this point now it, the band is called uh wait let me find it they're oh it's not a band it's a guy called ty stone okay okay and the name of the song that's playing when she's introduced is real thang mm. all right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's just cool and uh, so she walks out like look i'm gonna be a hot slut but i'm also really smart and here's how you know she's smart because she has the line i am so fucking smart <laughs> oh no <laughs> i make smart people feel that they're retarded which is yep. definitely a thing smart people say. Yeah, every smart person says that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That was the wildest thing ever. <laughs> so stupid. All right. Um, hey, Judd Nelson's in this. What, who was he? What do you mean? I feel like I've forgotten what you Judd You didn't Nelson recognize like. Judd Nelson? No, because I saw him in the credits, and I was like, do, 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 do I not know what he looks like anymore? I didn't recognize yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's in it a lot, actually. He's an Italian mobster who's like the son of the guy from the first one. He's he the, the one who shows like his gets... butt? Um, no. Julie Ben he's... smacks in the butt? No, he's the one who keeps getting words wrong. That's oh. like his bit. Okay. All right, you didn't even catch him, man. And, I, and it made me so sad for Judd Nelson. I mean, he was an actor with so much prom. He's so good in The Breakfast Club. Yeah, but like probably the best performance there. I know, but I, I do think he screwed himself. Like I, I do blame Judd for this. Like he got opportunities after The Breakfast Club, and he doesn't really show out. I yeah. watched this movie like Relentless, where he's supposed to play like a serial killer or something. And I was so excited. Like Judd Nelson is a serial killer. That's gonna be fucking baller. And I remember that movie being so boring. Yeah. 
That's sad. We could cover it though. There's sequels to it. <laughs> okay. I'd be excited for that. Yeah. Um He's still so, going today though. Yeah. I mean he had a little run in the nineties. He was Brooke Shields' love interest on Suddenly Susan. Okay, well. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Is that good? Um so anyway. He does a lot of Transformers voiceover. Oh, he does voiceover work now? That makes sense. Probably good money. Yeah. He has since the original animated movie in 86. Holy shit. He played Hot Rod in that, and he's still going uh, in 2000. Who does he play now? Well, in 2018, he played Unicron in Transformers Power of the Primes. Oh, isn't that like the god of the Transformers? Yeah, he's like a pretty important guy. I remember. Yeah. But he plays Hot Rod still, too. Or he did a few you, years ago. Rowdy Roddy Piper? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Um, now, what else do you want to talk about in this movie? Oh man, I'm not. Uh, I mean the the guy that killed. Well, he's so short. That's like a plot point. The killer is short, so we know right. that. They, I feel like that didn't come and that makes play him, again. That makes him gay. It's just an excuse they to call short that, people they? gay. Yeah, that's a lie. Every. every Anything in this movie, like that's not just like being a bro, makes you gay. At one point, Norman Reedus is like, "We should dye our hair." Oh yeah, blonde maybe lighter. He says he, all he says is lighter. And and Sean Patrick Flannery, you mean blonde? Oh, you mean blonde? You fucking fag. And I'm like, oh, it's <laughs> why? Why would that make you gay? Yeah, you're right. They, they even that. say like showing show, like this is like the worst movie to show to like a young man like and, and that's who the only people who can enjoy this movie are like 15 year old boys exactly which, it's which is like a bummer because like it's teaching them all the worst values it's just, it's just like showing your emotions makes you gay um having friends makes you gay uh you know crying makes you gay uh and rocco has a monologue at the end where he literally says the only men that aren't faggots are like john wayne yeah john well clint eastwood probably he loves he said him. but he says john wayne died with like 10 pounds of undigested red meat in his gut and he never showed an emotion in his life oh yeah that's, that's the rocco a man the whole rocco part that i hated that's the that's the worst part it's just yeah it's just rocco like dispensing his beliefs about being a man it's like what what is this five minute section here it is the worst it's from and a it dead is, character it's it like, is the is... softest shit ever like it really troy, is troy duffy is like the least sexually secure dude in the world yeah he, he is it's pretty terrible and you can't <laughs> and also you can't be mexican that's another thing yeah, well, C Clifton Collins is in this movie, who I think was in Fear of the Walking Dead, by the way. So. Okay. <laughs> and, man, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, oh, I might be thinking of Cliff Curtis. Cliff Curtis was. Oh, he's that. definitely in it. Yeah. Who, what's Cliff? Clifton Collins is a big he actor. He was in though. Star Trek. He was in Traffic, Capote, Brothers. You're just reading his top four on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I just did. Just now. <laughs> He was in he Nightmare Alley. In, yeah, yeah. Westworld. In, That's probably what yeah, he's I for. remember him in Westworld. I remember him in uh the 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 updated season of Veronica Mars, the reboot season. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. He's yeah. in the blacklist. Oh yeah, the blacklist. Yeah. One episode. Well, you're you're referencing that he's in one episode uh, of the blacklist. I didn't see he was in one episode. He's in Scott <laughs> Pilgrim? I don't remember that. Oh yeah, he's one of the police guys. Yeah. I mean, I know him more as more as Clifton Collins Jr. as more than a role specifically. Yeah, he, he's always been around and shit. And uh, he is in this movie. He's like Rocco's dead. So they need a new funny sidekick. And it's him. And he's doing it. And in this one, you know, he's Mexican, so they can really like rip on oh, that it's a lot. Awful. Like it, it might be worse than the gay stuff. It made me so uncomfortable. They're just using I don't want to say it, but that S word. It's so Oh yeah, bad. constantly. Con and and it's like he's a chill bro. So like he's just fine with it. Yeah, he just real, takes it. Real Mexican guy, like cool Mexican guys are just fine just being called a fucking spick constantly. Yeah, that's cool to them. Yeah. And he he mentions fajitas a couple times. Oh yeah, that's the big line. I like kind of like that part where he's like, "Well, I gotta come up with a big line." 
like 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 we need a bigger boat you know and his his line is i need fajitas baby what was it i'm gonna order some whoop ass fajitas oh yeah anyway yeah so that was a terrible character but at least clifton collins is good yeah he's great mvp he, he might be the mvp yeah he's yeah. done okay um so Julie Benz, first, we, we're gonna talk about her now. Yeah, at first you think Julie Benz is like a new FBI person investigating them, which would make sense, right? Right. But well, she is kind and, of, but she she funny, knew Defoe. Yeah, yeah. So she's an FBI agent investigating them, and you got the four cops who are like, we can't let her know that like we worked with them, like we're friends with the Boondog Saints. But then it turns out that Julie Benz was specifically chosen by defoe and like bequeathed his spot on the boondock saints team so she's on the team bro so nobody's investigating them this entire movie because the four cops and julie benz might as well just be honorary boondock saints yeah they're all they're on their on their side so it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even matter i like the part you know in the first movie there's a very funny bit about how sean patrick flannery wants rope Okay, because he says Charles Bronson's always using rope in movies, and then they get tangled in the rope and they're upside down. The whole thing's just an excuse to like have a cool shot that Troy Duffy thought of that isn't actually cool. Um, and I love that they just like accidentally kill everybody in that scene, and afterwards they're like, "We're real good at this." And then for the rest of the movie, we're supposed to believe that they're really good at this. Yeah, I got that too. That I don't think that showed a lot of skill. Later. That was a complete <laughs> accident. Yeah, but they're like, "Oh yeah, we're the best." It's like, all right. Uh, and then they're just like invincible for the rest of the movie. Um, but we do the rope bit again in this movie. It's a callback. Yeah, best um, part. But this time with the worst green screen you've ever seen behind it. Yeah, I noticed that too. It looked really terrible. Yeah, they look like they're on that fucking roof set in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recently saw a clip of that on 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 X this week that was like, uh, <laughs> this used to be considered like the worst green screen ever, and now it like looks pretty normal. <laughs> like, it, and it actually did. If you watch that scene today; it doesn't even look that bad. Hey, I I went to see the room in theaters last year. I'm no. very fresh. Yeah, I did. It's the uh, was that on your hand watching here? I don't remember yeah, you were talking sure, about the room. Sure, I'm yeah, it was twentieth anniversary. Did you throw spoons? That's a thing. That you I do. didn't, but people did. Yeah. What do you throw? You don't throw like metal spoons, do you? You throw no, no. They spoons? they bring like a like. There's always people at room screenings that bring like a bunch of packs of plastic spoons, then like hand them out in the audience. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, I would love to fun. do that. It would honestly be one of the most fun things ever is to go to a room screening with Tommy there. That would be so fun. He does I those, know. I think. Still, did I tell you about the time that I saw Tommy Wiseau on the street? I think you did. Yeah. Did you say anything <laughs> to him? Um. No, but I followed him for a few blocks just so I could watch him. What if you saw him like go in his apartment and then you knew where he lived? Oh my god, I wish. No, he was wearing this like long leather coat and he was flanked by these two dudes that were like his assistants and he was just like shouting instructions to them the whole time. Oh wow. That's not, <laughs> yeah, long hair. Has he ever had yeah. short hair? Uh, I don't, really weird. I don't know if he've, he's ever had short hair, but he he looked just like, you know, they have sunglasses. Uh, Yes, he was wearing sunglasses. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What's his character's name in the room? Johnny. Johnny, thank you so much. He changed it from Tommy to Johnny. He really... Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> stretching as an actor. Um, all right. Um, what else you got? Uh, so Julie Benz, ba oh, yeah, well, she like smacks that guy on the butt and then said, you got a big, nice butt for a fat man. And I thought his butt was one of his worst features and he wasn't that fat. He wasn't that fat, didn't have that nice of a butt. I agree with you <laughs> on both like, of those things. Yeah, it's that was in the script, but they didn't bother like thinking about that when they were casting. Yeah, and they just left it in there. Yeah. And then now we have to th question it, why that line was there mm -hmm. all these years later. 15 <laughs> years later. Yeah, that dude like kept like being attacked in various states of undress. At one point they I like that oh, guy. he's he's wearing pink briefs cuz he's mad gay, you know. And then he shits in them. We get to see a shit stain in those briefs. That's, I like. I kind of like that actor. What do you think? He's one of the better ones here. I I actually kind of agree. Yeah, he 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 was fine. They, like this movie, like people knew the first movie, so I feel like they were able to get like a few character actors involved that like felt like real actors. 
Who who was that guy? I don't even really know. I have no idea. Here. I have no idea. Is he Rob Wells? No, that's Are, you're looking at the cast right now. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who that guy is, but I don't uh, even know. Let me see. I'll tell you if I can find him. I just watched it last night. I did too. <laughs> but did you notice that one of the cops' names is Duffy? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. I, I think it is Rob it. Wells. I think it, it is. Yeah. Rob Wells. He's one of the trailer park boys. Really? See, that's why he was funny. Yeah, he's a Canadian comedian. I guess you're right about that. Yeah. He yeah. was in that movie, Would You Rather, with Brittany Snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He's not that's very cool. good in that, and I'll say that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, he was I mean, funny. That makes maybe sense. Maybe he's not very good in this, too, but he's just better than a lot of other people. Yeah, compared so to he, he was definitely. Yeah. He's like second best. I'd go Collins first. He might be better than Ben's. Yeah, but I got to say, I, I love Julia Benz, but that is this is not a good performance. It's it's not. I don't know if I want to blame her or him, though. Duffy, <sighs> if it was her idea to do the southern accent, I, I don't know. Or maybe she's miscast, but like something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. I think she's good at playing. Uh, I think she I never really thought about it much until watching this, but I think she's she's uh, has like a lot of Jennifer Tilly's acting sensibilities kind of i kind of think well that she has a, that that kind of similar voice like joey lauren Breathy. adams has like yeah. renee zellweger has yeah true mm -hmm. and they play up their sex appeal a lot i think i think that's what it is but i got jennifer tilly in this one i don't know well maybe she was a brunette Yo, oh, yeah yeah maybe till dog she's usually brunette it's true do you like russian roulette you ever played russian roulette you mean, have I ever let somebody shoot me with one bullet in the gun? And... Or you could do it yourself. No, I've never played Russian roulette. Oh, yeah, okay. Have you ever seen The Deer Hunter? No, never saw it. That movie, like, 30% of the scenes in that movie is dudes playing Russian roulette. Yeah, that's what I know about it. <laughs> it's like the cover of it. I, I should recommend you that this week, just to fuck with you. Well, I wouldn't watch it, because it's three hours long. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, and the cover to... of it is literally, it's, uh, the guy with the gun to his head. Yeah, there's so much Russian roulette in that movie. But it never stops being tense. That's a great movie. Guess what, guys? The Deer Hunter, better than both Boondock Saints, I would say. That's one of Kazale's films. One of his five. Yeah, it's true. Did he meet Streep on this one? Oh, Did no, they... I think this is after they were already. Never mind. All right. I don't know. So... I never watched that Kazale documentary. So I don't oh, know really? as much about him as some, some other people do. I, well, I, don't, I just know he dated Streep, and he was in five movies, and then he died. Yeah. That's all people know about him, I think. I, and, all, and all five movies are like all-time classics. They really are. It's like Dog Day Afternoon, both Godfathers and the Deer Hunter, and like maybe one other. And some, yeah, something else. The Conversation. The Conversation, yeah. It's amazing. Incredible. What a track record. But uh, So the, so the, the, are we at the end? Defoe comes in? <laughs> Fine. I mean, I don't know what else happened. Yeah. Any, Defoe... Anything from like the flashbacks you want to talk about? No, I don't care. Okay. Uh, I was really bored by the flashbacks. Yeah, and you really poked the hole in it, it not being in Ireland. That that's a good point. Like, if it's in New York, and Dad was always in New York, then they were born in New York. Why do they have an accent at all? I don't know. Yeah. Um. So, Defoe. Yeah, he shows up at the end. It's a real surprise. He's fishing, and Julie Benz is there. And I didn't the, see it coming. The, did you? No, not at all. She she's like even up to when it comes, she's standing there. There's a person fishing over there and i never even once was like oh that's defoe right there and then we hear his voice like hey darla you want to come over here and you're like wait was that willem defoe <laughs> hey it darla was. help me kill spider-man <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, um all right so this part is i hate it i mean it's fun that willem defoe is there but yeah. they the boondock saints that are in prison all right they're in a maximum security prison now you might think they'd have a hard time in a maximum security prison. They kill criminals, and everyone in prison is criminals. They might hold this against them. And it, the Punisher's gone to prison a couple times in the comics, and every time it's been like a whole mess. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not here. We love them. No, but no, it's the, the criminals don't love them. OK, like the criminals like hate these guys, but there are protesters outside the prison. Oh, like like we love the saints. Release them. They are good guys. And 
Um, Wouldn't that make the prisoners hate him more, though, that they have supporters? You'd think so. You'd think so, right. Uh, the, the criminals really hate them. And Ben's is like, well, we got to get out of there. We got to get them out of there as soon as possible. Let's plan a prison break because they're going to get killed in that prison. And Willem Dafoe just goes like, I wouldn't worry about them. And then it's they, they show them in prison, like making little gun fingers at some criminals. And it's like, see, the boondock saints are so badass <laughs> that they they're they don't have to worry about getting killed in prison because they're just going to out badass the entire criminal population exactly they're just gonna yeah i'm more badass than you therefore you can't <laughs> kill me i have the support of that person on the other side of the fence and you don't right. that's right so um so yeah that's where the movie leaves like they're in prison but like don't even worry about it yeah they'll be fine don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and eventually willem dafoe and julie ben's two fbi agents are apparently going to spring them i can't i honestly i can't wait to see the third one I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Um, I hope it never gets If it made. happens. Yeah, it pr- it'll probably never happen. Yeah. That's why I, I'm so excited because if it does happen, then that means like it actually happened, which is exciting to me. I thought this movie was a disaster. I mean, it was always going to be, but it it's just a badly made movie on every conceivable level. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, I love the one line where and Darla... it's way too long. Two hours. Yeah, it's like 10 minutes longer than the first one. Did you catch this where Julie Ben says, I'm your guardian angel? My name is Eunice Bloom, and I'm your new guardian angel. Oh, you, you like that because she said angel. It's like an angel reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really <laughs> cool to me. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah. Do, do people like her performance? I I didn't really see the letterbox reviews. The it, the letterbox reviews for this movie though, a it has a two point seven, which is way too high. That's very high. Um, but what it is is like the only people that really watched it are dudes that are like fans of the first one. So like they were into it. True. Like if you look at the IMDb re- reviews of this movie, like everyone is just like they're back. Fucking love the six. <laughs> like hell yeah. Yeah, no, I see a lot of two, twos and threes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, so whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll go one for this one. But I didn't. Same. I mean, we've had a lot of bad weeks on the franchise talking about some shit. And here I was I was I was pretty into the experience of it. Listen, I got called into work yesterday on Memorial Day. Had to had to go and work by myself for for eight hours. And then I had to come home and watch this at midnight. This was a bad week for me. Yeah. I mean, I understand, but it could have been uh, Hot Tub Time Machine 2. I would much prefer that. I, Hot Tub Time Machine 2 is better than both these movies. Maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> There's Bigelow 2. That was better than both these movies. Both of them? Yeah. That's just false. Boondock Saints 1 is better than Deuce Bigelow 2. European I disagree. Gigolo. I disagree. No, I think I guess that's where we differ. I don't know. No, see, like the weeks that are hard for me are just like when we've been doing a franchise for a while and like we have to watch like part five and Unisol six. Five and they're and both six. like two and a half hours long. No, like I'm thinking of long. like pirates, transformers. Mm. Like I had a hard time with those. Yeah. I thought this was a pretty easy week. I don't know. I it's it. fine. I had fun watching the first one again, kind of like there's some nostalgia attached to it. And I was able to watch it with my girlfriend who likes the movie. She gave the and second one a one. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't like it. Does the she not log stuff on Letterboxd anymore, by the way? I feel <sighs> like I never. The last thing she did was Dune 2. Yeah, it f- really frustrates me. We what watch stuff this? together all the time. And she doesn't log them. And I, I tell her to. And I, I tell her to want her to. And she won't do it. Yeah, her last four, Dune, Past Lives, American Fiction, The Zone of Interest. We that watched was... ages ago. Seriously. Come on. Yeah. I'd love um, it if she got back on. I would, too. I'll tell her you said that. Yes. Um. Okay. MVP? Yeah, Clifton, Clifton Collins. Collins. LVP? Who's your LVP? I'm going Norman Reedus in this one. <laughs> Man, really no, you could, Reedus. You could maybe go the other guy. He's actually might be worse than I one. prefer Reedus to the other guy. I think I agree, actually. I'll go Flannery LVP here. What if I give it to Rocco again? 
Oh, that's actually the choice. He's dead. He's there's no reason for him to be here. He shows up. He's like fatter than he was, even though he's dead. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's fat. He's fat. Ten years older, <laughs> and he's just like telling us about the, his way of life. You're right. Yeah, I also want to give honorable mention to like Judd Nelson. All right, because like oh, no. Judd Nelson and Peter Fonda are like both real actors, and they're in this movie, and like Billy Connolly, I guess too, and and like. Billy Connolly and Peter Fonda come across like real actors, at, like even though like the movie's terrible around them. Mm-hmm. And Judd Nelson, it's like amateur hour, and it's such a bummer. Yeah, and as bad as the Julie Benz accent is, she does come off as a real actor too. I, I, yeah, I think she's I doing agree. a good job acting. It's just the the accent <laughs> it was so horrendous. But <laughs> so rank them one two. Yeah. Okay, so you want me to read the comments first? Yeah. Okay. So this is Patreon, folks. Patreon.com slash the franchise to comment and listen to all our extra shit. I'll tell you about that more later. Yes, we're going to do our first ever He Swift this week, guys. Yeah, yeah. First episode of a new show, He Swift. Just two bros talking Taylor. Hell yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> so, and it's the first album. If you're confused yeah, the what self, that meant. we're talking about the self-titled. Yes. So Ross Beck says We're the going only- era by era. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> he says the only things I remember about the first one are a guy getting smashed with a toilet and symbolism. I don't know if I said oh, that. Oh right. yeah. Uh, from Defoe. Defoe. For yeah. the symbol. What's the symbolism, you know? Yeah. Uh, I still hear it over pronounced like this in my head whenever anyone says the word. Oh, and the corpse's eye twitch when the pennies are placed on them. There's like B movie horror level incompetence. I told you. I didn't notice this. You gotta go back and look at it. It is wild. Yeah. Like I, I, when it happened, I actually thought for a second, like that, like the movie was trying to tell us that guy's gonna survive. And oh, it's that bad. Yeah, like that obvious. Right. I I thought it was like, oh, that one's alive. He's gonna like you know turn them in or something. But no. (laughs) It's just they're like dead. Yeah. He says we could see it on the blue on the blurry VHS. Wow. Yeah. I enjoyed it as an angsty student when it was a fresh rental, but it just doesn't mm-hmm. hold up. We were desperate for memorable action when this was released, and it propped it was propped up by good timing. If it had a right if I had a right place, right time playlist, this would be there for sure. Mm. That was Ross Beck who said that? Ross Beck. All right, I love Ross. Ro- the founder of Ross Flicks. Yeah, legend. <laughs> Le- then, total legend and william anastasio says daniel wasn't kidding when he said how bad this movie is i'm not mm. sure what the foe was going for or what direction he was given i'll tell you what direction he was given none i'll say cut whenever i want to say cut motherfucker that's what he said to him once not not really not exactly like that uh but it would just felt so odd no chance i'm watching the sequel good for you william <laughs> good for you honestly yeah great job yeah. Yes, you know, so I I watch I see sometimes on Letterbox like dudes like powering through franchises with us just like giving them all once. Like Maddie Rags <laughs> watched all the fucking Universal Soldier movies and I was like, god damn, I'm like ruining this kid's life right now. That's so sad. Yeah. Hey, um Michael Babcock says bad movie, but you got to admit that's a pretty fantastic Willem Dafoe performance. See, also so the, the opinions may vary. Yeah. And he says, also, Lars von Trier said he has a confusingly large penis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that just means Lars has a small one, probably. No, no, no. This is a thing. This is a thing. Um, it, on the set of uh, Antichrist, okay? Mm-hmm. Someone commented on my... Maybe it was him. Who, who wrote that? Michael Babcock. Oh, is Michael Babcock movie Mike? I don't think so. Okay, well... I thought he was Michael Babcock on... Does he not have a letterbox? I don't remember. He might but be movie Mike. I don't. I he might be so. movie Mike. But movie Mike, I watched Antichrist recently, and he responded to the review, um, something that I I'd, I'd heard already. Uh, but thanks. If for it's this l- exact thing, it might be him. Yeah, yeah. It was. Um, let me find the comment. Especially if he words it exactly. He the wrote, same. I think this is the movie where either a crew member or Von Trier said they had to use a body double in a nude scene for Defoe because he has a confusingly large penis. I guess that's him. Confusingly right. large penis. So this guy really likes that fact. And and that's fine. I do too. I've never quite bought into it. I think it might be Lars Von Trier, like, I love Willem Defoe. He's like a good buddy. Let me 
get it in the public record that he is a huge dick. Really? But yeah, that was like a thing on the set of Antichrist that they like the dick you see in the movie isn't Willem Dafoe's because when we've Willem seen it though in other stuff, I've seen Willem Dafoe's All penis. Right. They he said that when Willem Dafoe took his pants off on the set of Antichrist, his dick was so big that he was like, we can't use that in the movie because like it, it you don't seem like a normal person. That's crazy. Yeah. I never quite bought into it, but it is a legend. Uh, and then Josh Merlis says, Dan pointing out that co- cochlear, as you say, has the word ear in it was a hilarious revelation. Cochlear. I know, but you said cochlear. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I remember it. Because we, we did cochlear. Yeah, we didn't know if it was oh. cock or coke. All right. Yeah. It was a hilarious revelation. It's pronounced cochlear. I love it so much when you guys get all nicey and say how much you appreciate. When do we do that? This this might be at the. Was it the wrestling show this week <laughs> where I was like, I love you. I love Mikey Graff. Oh, yeah. You I love me. Yeah. You're wearing that wrestling show. You love that wrestling I show. had a great time doing it this week. Um, so he's talking about that one it warms my heart he says can't wait to hear about dan's favorite porn film the Pooncock taints oh my goodness listen i i hate the boondock saints so much i won't i wouldn't even watch that (laughs) and it sounds great no it doesn't (laughs) that sounds like the worst the the i'm gonna say it again guys all right skip ahead 15 seconds if you don't want to hear it but it's called the Pooncock taints i don't think it's real i think josh made it up Oh, he made that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it's it sounds delightful. But I would never watch it because I can't even watch like I wouldn't want to watch a version of this where they're fucking. Although th- I thought about that a lot watching Boondock Saints too, because there's so much gay panic in that movie, and like the two brothers just like constantly calling each other gay and the f slur or whatever. That like I I genuinely felt like the only ending that would make sense is if they end up fucking each other. Even though they're brothers? Yeah, even though they're brothers. Wow. They do have like a little bit of like a... I think like there was like one sexual moment. in the, uh, Was it the first <laughs> one? Where they're like shirtless on the in, in bed and then they wake up and they like look into each other's eyes and like <laughs> a weird close-up on their faces? If they're What's in that? prison long enough, I do think they're going to end up fucking. Each other or just want any of the people e- there? Each other. Wow. I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, okay. Well, what's next? What are we doing next? Oh, next uh, on the franchise. Next week we're covering. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> fever night, fever night, fever. Yeah, we're doing the Saturday Night Fever and its sequel, Staying Alive, both starring John Travolta, and. Uh, and that'll be fun. You know, that first one's really good and that second one's wacky. So it'll be a fun franchise. Okay. I've never seen them. I remember when we did Grease, we talked about them. We were like, I'd do Saturday Night Fever, but it never yeah. never came back up. My Here friend Gallagher has wanted me to do it for years. So shall I, I'll dedicate the episode to him. I love that. I love, I'll put okay. it in the description also. <laughs> By the way, Ryder Strong gives the Boondock Saints half a star. Good. He finally got something right. After all these years, he finally got something right. Yeah, and he never watched the Boondock Saints too, so good for him. I was I I watched the apartment and I saw that Ryder Strong gave it a four and a half, and I was like, I just had I was imagining Ryder Strong. I just had a couple issues with it. <laughs> yeah, guys. Dan, so Daniel, in between Boondock Saints, he had to do a little cleanser. He watched the apartment, one okay. of the best movies ever made. You want to guess what I watched in between? What? Any guess at all? No. Just guess a movie. Basketball. Basket. I watched basketball. Uh oh, basketball game. Uh, no, I watched Punch Drunk Love for the first time. First time. Never seen. Wow. What What did you think? I, we'll talk about it. I like. God, it. God damn it! Check out. Hey, I'm watching here this week. Uh, Logan's vowed to watch 16 movies. Yeah, and that was one of them. Punch Drunk Love. I like. It. I feel right. like is it Henry that doesn't like it, and you like it, and you? Yeah. What happened? You guys yeah. always argue about it. That's I think right. I agree with you more, I guess. I like okay, it. cool. I don't know. But we have a review, right? Oh, yeah. Let's read the iTunes review. It's very funny and nice. Yeah, speaking of Ryder Strong, this reference, reference to him. I'm oh, yeah, that's right. Up. I love this one. 
He says it's from the Jimmy G. Okay. Yeah. He says it's uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, by the way. Jimmy Garoppolo. Thank yeah. you, to Jimmy Garoppolo. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, five stars. The title is Logan Does Just Fine. <laughs> which should be Logan does just amazing is what it should say, but that's okay. I have five podcasts subscribed on my phone: the franchise, Real Weird Sisters, R H A P, and Pod Meets World. That's only four. One, two, three, four. That's only four. I have Wait. five podcasts subscribed: the franchise, Real Weird Sisters, R H A P, and Hang Pod on. Meets World. I that's don't trust that you're reading this properly. Okay. So I'm going to just pull it up right now and read it myself. Why didn't you I put ha- the fifth one there? What do you mean? He says he has... No, he no, subscribed- I know what you're saying, but... All right. I have five podcasts subscribed to my phone. The Franchise, The Real Weird Sisters, Rob Has a Podcast, and Pod Meets World, the Boy Meets World podcast featuring Ryder Strong. You're right. That's only four. And then he says they're all connected. All I want only Jimmy meaning the four, G. though. Jimmy G needs to write one of us and let us know what the fifth one. Is. Let us know the fifth. I'm very yeah, curious. Yeah. It might just be like two Rob, like you know, post show recaps. Oh yeah, R J P and R R A A and A P. Oh fuck that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So listen to this though. The franchise, real weird sisters. Rob has a podcast, and the Boy Meets World podcast featuring Ryder Strong. Oddly. They are all connected in a way that only makes sense when I explain it with a whiteboard. I feel like I'm the only one that exists here, but it check, check them out. Franchise rules. I love that because I know exactly what he's talking about. They are yeah. all weirdly connected. <laughs> yeah, they are. And you wouldn't possibly need a whiteboard. Yeah, I don't think he's the only one. Well, he might be the pod meets world one listening because I know him H- 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 or Dan or uh, not, what's that? What's that fucking guy's name that we talked to? Tim, he I know he <laughs> listens to three of the four of those, but not Pod Meets World, I don't think. But po- but the reason Pod Meets World is connected to us is that we always talk about Ryder Strong's uh, I know, Letterbox I, reviews. I'm saying about him being the only one that lives there. Like he might actually be because the, the only person who I can think of that listens to three of the four is Tim. I love, there's got to be others. Like I think it's great. But and yeah. he says dream rotation, which I assume means dream blunt rotation. Oh, I thought he meant um, dream podcast, but you're probably oh, right. May, it might be podcast. Either way, but he says his dream rotation: franchise guys, including Henry, Alice, and Martha. Shut up, Tim, and Topanga. <laughs> Which I mean, just sounds like the best time of my life. It does, yeah. But there's no. He left out R. The R H A P people, though. Well, fuck them. Like he did, but he didn't even include one of them. Like he put Topanga as his one Pod Meets World representative. I mean, there who would you include? Who's the representative uh, from RHA? Mary Josh Kwiatkowski. Wiggler. Oh, yeah. Josh Wiggler would be good, too. All right. He'd be good. Um, Maybe, like, uh, Stephen Fishback. He'd be great, too. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't read Eric Nelson's comment. I don't see Eric Nelson's comment. He, so wrote, he wrote, show sounds crystal clear, miles from how it sounded a few years back. I appreciated that. 